Hi, my name is LaFea Mitchell, author of The LaFea Way. The LaFea Way book series is for parents of hypersensitive children. If you would like more information after listening to this video, then you can refer to either barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com, or email me at lafeamft at gmail.com. But for today, I'm going to discuss with you how to prevent parental burnout because it's a big time issue, especially for parents of hypersensitive children. Now this could be a big time issue for almost any parent, okay? So your child doesn't have to be identified as hypersensitive. However, when you have hypersensitive children, it is even much more important that you learn how to prevent and decrease the effects of parental burnout. A parental burnout is when you're just exhausted. You're tired of dealing with your child. You're saying lots of things often like, I'm done, I'm not gonna say anything else to them, or this child drives me crazy. If you're saying any of these things or you know, anything close, then that means you're suffering from a bit of burnout. So today I'm going to give you two tips for how to reduce parental burnout. First tip is to set good boundaries. I can't emphasize it enough. There are parents out there that they're not only burnt out, but they're continuing to feel overwhelmed because they are not setting appropriate boundaries. If your child or anyone else it is that you're dealing with in your life has not earned something, then you likely need to make sure that you're not over giving to them. When I say over giving, I mean, if you had to have a child who's been acting out all day long, and then at the end of the day, they're asking you, hey, mom or dad, can we go out for ice cream? You want to tell them, you know, I wouldn't be comfortable with that. Maybe we'll try tomorrow when you've had a better day. But those boundaries often aren't set and that those are huge contributors to the parental burnout. I'm constantly hearing parents say, well, I do so much for them. I do this and that and the other, and they won't even do the one thing that I asked them to do. And so then my question to them is, well, then why do you continue to do all of these things? Now, if you're feeding, clothing, making sure your child is safe and, you know, taking care of health concerns, all those important, very necessary things, of course you do those. But when it comes to all the extras, that is something that I'm not saying that you want to be punitive, but I'm really saying that you don't want to do things that are going to cause you resentment. You're going to feel more resentful if you do too much for someone who's not earning it. And that's in any relationship. But right now we're discussing parent-child. Second part to setting good boundaries is when you're overtired, if there may not have been anything wrong that the other person did, you are just yourself exhausted, you don't have the energy, then don't do as much, do less. I know that there are many out there, especially if you're watching this video, you're clearly invested in being that great parent or a better parent, but when you're invested in that way, you often kind of go into that superhero space where you kind of overdo, 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 but you don't have the superpowers to be able to keep up with all this overdoing. So when you're tired, do less and don't feel guilty about it. You'll have more to give to your child later and you'll have better energy to give to your child later. So lots of parents out there are like, oh, well, I guess, you know, well, you know, I am really tired today, but you know, I, if you need that, I guess I'll go do it. And it's almost like you become this victim to your child's desires when it's not necessary for you to do that. You can just simply say things like, you know what, I'm really tired today, but I'd be happy to do that for you tomorrow. Or if it's not imperative that this thing happen right this second, then we're going to go ahead and wait until I'm, I take a nap first. But if there's a truly urgent situation of project that needs to be done for a school or you know something like that, then make use of your support system. If you have a support system around you, don't be afraid to call your mom or your sister and say, hey, can you do me a big favor? It doesn't make you a bad parent. It makes you a parent who knows their limits. If you start to set good boundaries for yourself, you'll recognize a difference in how overwhelmed you're feeling with things. You'll make use of the resources that you have. You won't feel bad about that. And you'll also take breaks when you need them and you won't like over martyr yourself by doing too much. The second area that I'd like to address to help you to reduce the tendency toward parental burnout is good self-care. Now, I know a lot of you out there are thinking, I don't have time to take care of myself. And I hear this from parents all the time. I spend all my time taking care of the children. I spend all my time working and all those kind of things. But if you don't take out that time for self-care, you won't have the proper energy that you need to do all the things that you need to do. When we have so many things that we're doing, you have to take out time for self-care. Over the years, I've watched a lot of self-help videos. They say, take the morning 
and it's so important. I've just recently myself really started to take hold of that concept and use it. There are lots of things that I'm doing that require me to now be more focused and organized. In that organization, I've organized in a way for self-care and that's first. I now wake up at 5.30 and I spend some time and my own personal self-care is things like meditation and therapeutic reading or listening to affirmations. Those things really help me to get a better start to my day. I find myself now with more energy to do all the things that I need to do just simply because I've exercised that little piece of self-care. But other ways that you can properly take care of self, schedule in some time for a nap during your day. Schedule in some time to just be in a dark space where you kind of close your eyes and just breathe and relax. The brain needs to know that during your waking hour, there is actually a relaxing moment. And another piece of self-care is schedule your you time. I know everything that I've talked about so far has sounded like you time, but that's not quite you time. You need to schedule time for a massage, get one of those small little tubs little cheap tubs from Walmart and fill it up with really warm water and soak your feet or do something that feels like self-care to you. Just to have that time to feel pampered, to feel like there's someone taking care of you. When you take care of yourself, then you're going to in general feel taken care of and you won't feel so upset and so much animosity toward others that you do things for because oftentimes we'll feel like they're mistreating us when honestly we're mistreating ourselves so we're not getting a break we're overtired and then we're extra upset with whatever it is that they're doing and blaming them for being upsetting to us when in the first place we were the original upsetters of ourselves by not properly self-caring i hope all that made sense <laughs> anyway so the two primary areas again that i want you to focus in on is setting good boundaries for yourself and good self-care. If you do those two things, you will go a long way to decreasing, preventing parental burnout. One of the major reasons that I want to really address the parental burnout aspect is because it becomes quite a vicious cycle for most parents and children, especially hypersensitive children. Hypersensitive children, they tend toward taking, drawing from, sponging in what's happening with other people emotionally. And so if you're feeling burnt out and you're consistently feeling frustrated, irritated, overtired, you know, overwhelmed, then when you are around your children, they are going to pick up on that energy and they're going to take that energy in as well. So then they're going to appear agitated and overwhelmed as well. So then you get that, that vicious cycle of you're feeling burnt out, they're behaving in more ways that cause you to feel burnt out, and it's just not a fun situation at all. If you have any questions for me about this particular segment, then please do leave a message for me down in my comment section. Send your email to me, ask the hard questions, and I'll be happy to answer those for you. And it may even be a subject of a future video so that other parents can benefit. It's always a pleasure to teach and train on the LaFayette way. Until next time, stay you and stay true.